So, does anybody know this man? His name is Kevin Fast. He is a priest. Um, but besides being a priest, he also holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the heaviest object ever pulled, and it is that large plane that you see there. That plane weighs over 400,000 pounds. He pulled it a distance of, I want to say, over 25 feet, and the only reason he stopped is because they told him to stop. Um, he had broken the world record, but he was just, he was just keeping going. We like challenge. I mean, that's why he does this. He, he set a goal for himself, and he wants to attain it. Now, on a more local level, I enjoy challenges too. <laughs> now, it's nice when you do it, though. I mean, I have seen in class that when you successfully do a challenge problem, that you all are quite happy. It's like, well, yes, I did something special. Um, if I could just fill my classes with these things without torturing you all, that would be fantastic. Um, but moderation. Now, challenges feel good when you succeed, but what if you don't? Now, I'm thinking of a student who took an exam not too long ago, and the student did very well on the exam, but did not get the score that the student wanted. And so, when I gave the exam to the student, the student took the exam, crumpled it into a ball, threw it on the floor, and then repeatedly stepped on it. And at this point, I'm thinking, you know what, I might as well help the student out. So I was like, hey, what about the paper shredder? <laughs> so the student took the paper, you know, crinkled it back out, and fed it to the paper shredder. And there goes the exam. You know, that's the downside of challenge. When you don't succeed at a challenge, it hurts. And so we can just put it into a simple equation. If you succeed, you have joy. If you fail, you are angry. Would you say that is a fair statement? Yeah. Now, the nice thing about pieces of paper is that they don't have feelings. Um, they don't mind going through paper shredders. I mean, it's just, they're still paper. It's, it's not such a big deal. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't matter so much if you're going against a plane. The plane doesn't have feelings. Neither does an exam. But I'll tell you what, the game entirely changes when your opponent is suddenly a human being. Those feelings don't change just because your opponent changes. You still have the same joy when you succeed and the same anger and distress when you fail. And I'm sure you can guess what this is about. This is about competition. Now, when I was doing some research into this, I don't know if you realize it, but there is a sporting event that happens in the Bible. Did you know this? Does anyone know where it is? You haven't seen the sporting event? It's in 2 Samuel chapter 2. And what the story is about is, I'll put it on the screen, and yes, you can't read it, that's okay, I'll make it bigger. Um, it is when, this is after David takes the kingdom, Saul is dead, and, but there's some tension, there's a bit of a civil war going on, and you have these two armies meet at this large pool. It's this, it's this really deep cave, like 60 or 70 feet down in the ground. It was a big watering hole. You know, it's a desert. So they meet there, and they're all surrounding the pool. And things are tense, because you have, you know, these two opposing sides, but they really don't want to fight. You know, these are like friends and brothers, but it's, it's still a tense situation. And then they decide to do something, basically. Now, it doesn't say that this is a sporting event, but let me pull a few words out of the verse, and, or the verses, and you'll understand what I mean. First off, it was all about the young men. They selected the best. And they said, let them arise and play before us. You can look into the Hebrew, it really does mean the word play. It's, it's not joking around. Um, 
And then they form two teams of 12 men on each side, and this event happens in the middle of a field. Now, what happens when people play two teams in a field with their very best people? Yeah, <laughs> it's a soccer match, basically. Now, I, now, we don't know what sport it is that they were playing, but I think it's as plain as the day dawns that they were doing something. Does anyone know how the story ends? Yes. Now, we don't know the details of what happened because the Bible doesn't give exactly the events that led up to it. But maybe somebody made a bad call or somebody was a little too rough or something happened. But the end result was that all of the 12 guys got their swords and actually killed each other. And it didn't stop there. The other two sides rose up and it was one of the most vicious battles of that whole civil war. Um, I'll go into more details, but for sake of time, I won't. Now, it's not every sport or any competition that ends up this way, because there's lots of games that happen and people just go home and everything's nice. But competition has this ability to take an already bad situation and make it worse. And that's what I see in this story. Now, I was doing a little bit of research into emotions that people experience when they are competing. And there were two very common emotions, and I was honestly shocked by the first one. It's something I had never considered. The most common emotion when you are competing is worry. You're afraid. You're afraid of what the other person will do to you. I was reading the report, and it, it was actually giving the thoughts of someone that was playing some particular game, and he was just utterly afraid of this other guy on the field because he was just knocking balls and he couldn't do anything about it. And so it was just this downward depressive spiral during the whole game. The other one is something I would have more easily guessed, and that is anger. Now, it's not necessarily anger at the person. In fact, it's usually not. It's usually self-anger. I didn't do good enough. I failed somehow. But anger all the same. Now, joy was one of the emotions that they experienced, but they only experienced it 30% of the time. The other 70% of the time, they're afraid and they're angry. It's kind of depressing. Somewhat addictive, yet depressing. It's very strange. Now, I don't want to keep this as just a study of research studies because I was this kid in the picture. You see, I started, well, I don't want to call it competing. Um, I'm terrible at sports. You, you put a soccer ball in front of me, I might actually miss it when I try to kick it. Um, I just, I remember one time somebody threw a frisbee at me and I, I guess my depth perception was off because I'm staring at it, it's just like sitting in my vision and then wham, it hits me square in the forehead because it, it just didn't look like it was moving, but it was actually flying straight from my face. Go figure. So, you know, active sports were never my thing, but I have a pretty good mind, and I have pretty good reflexes, and so I was very big into computer games, which is another form of competition. I think it's more accepted nowadays. And I played computer games for 20 years, from the age of three, to the age of 23. In other words, I've played games longer than most of you have been alive. So I, I have a wealth of experiences and stories to draw upon as far as competition, because I was, let's just say, I was, I'm not the person that I am now. I was not the person that I am now. So I want to tell you a few stories. Um, this one comes from when I was around 9 or 10 years old. We had one of the first internet cafes that ever existed. They didn't even have the internet. That's how old this is. You just stuck computers together and you could play against each other, but no online anything. And it was a four-person match, and you know I'm like 9 or 10 years old, and there's like 20-year-olds and, and people playing. 
And this was a game, it was a first-person shooter. That's where you have a gun and you shoot people until they die. That's the whole point. And when they die, they come back to life because otherwise the game would end very, very quickly. So, now I was facing off against this one person and I managed to beat him. And we were in this hallway. Now, the thing is that when you come back to life, it's not always known where you're going to end up. In fact, it's random. There's different points in the area where you'll just suddenly reappear. So he reappears in front of me. And so I'd hold on the button and he dies again. And he reappears in front of me. And so I just keep holding the button this happens not twice, not three times, not five times, nine times in a row. And he just appears, dies, appears, dies, appears, dies. And I'm just sitting here like da, 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 you know, and just. <laughs> now, and I'm looking at his face and it's, it's like from nice to worried to angry. And finally he gives this loud shout and he just slams the keyboard. Now it's not even his keyboard. This is, this is at an internet cafe. Now, you know, this is just dumb luck. I mean, this, there's no skill involved in what I did. It still made him really angry that this happened. And yeah, you can say, yeah, it's just a game, but when, when this happens to you, it sure doesn't feel like it. Another time, I was, this was a different game, I was much older, and I was guarding something. There was different points on a map that you had to keep control of, you know, there's two teams. And I'm the type of person that likes to be more responsible. So like, well, everyone off is, everyone's run off and is, you know, playing around, fighting with other people. I'm just gonna sit here and guard. And so this guy, this opponent comes down the hill towards me for obvious reasons. And so we fight, I beat him, I go back and I sit down. And then another person, a different person, comes down the hill. It's like, okay, I get up, we fight, I beat him, I sit back down. This happens seven times. A different person comes down the hill by himself, we fight, and I win, and I go and sit back down. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I see all seven of them coming down the hill. <laughs> they decided to get revenge. <laughs> I did not win that fight, <laughs> but it made them kind of mad. Um, couldn't just get this guy off. Um, a less flattering story, you could say. I was playing another game. I played a lot of games. And in this particular one, you had a ship. And this was how you interacted with the world. You'd go different places. And in this particular one, I was making a long journey because I was moving my, my home, basically. So I loaded everything into my ship, every possession that I had, and I left. And so I'm cruising around, you have to, you know, it takes like an hour for this, this whole journey. And at this, at this particular point, I, I appear in this new place and there are pirates like actual people, there's, there's a group of five people sitting around this place waiting for people like myself to suddenly appear for fairly obvious reasons. They want my stuff. And so I book, I, I just run for it because I, I don't have a chance. Now thankfully, I was, I was pretty new at this, so I, I knew a few techniques. And so I, I managed to avoid them. And so they, they disappeared. It's like, okay, I lost them. And so I continue my journey. They had not disappeared. They were waiting for me at the next place. And so the same thing happens. I appear, and this time I just panic, and I, I start running for it. And so they, it was this game where I try to run ahead of them, and they try to get ahead of me to trap me because I was faster than they may have suspected. Um, Eventually, my luck ran out. They set a trap for me, and I was stuck. And while they were blasting my ship to pieces, one of them sends me a message. GG. Good game. And then, <laughs> I blow up, and they take all my stuff. Do you think I felt like it was a good game? No way. I was so angry, I quit the game. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Even now, I think about it, it's like, oh, it's, it's difficult. But that's what competition does. You face off against a person and somebody's going to lose. Somebody's going to be angry. Now, a lot of times, I was the one winning. And a lot of times, I was the one losing. So either I was angry or I was making other people angry. And the same result either way. You know, and that's the difficult thing about competition. It has this erosion effect on your personality because of the constant worry and the constant anger and the constant fighting against other people, it slowly wears you down. And not even professionals are immune to this. I, I had thought about getting videos of, and showing you videos of, of professional players getting mad during their, their events, but I, I just thought it would be like too comical almost. It's, it's ridiculous what some people do. Um, I remember seeing one, a tennis player, I guess he had just lost a match. And so he takes his tennis racket and just repeatedly beats a fence and, ma and mashes up his racket. He walks over to the other player, shakes his hand, and walks off the court. <laughs> you know, actions speak louder than words. He, yeah, he was just really mad. That is a big reason why we don't do that here. Um, when I was in Honduras, Hondurans love competition. If you do anything with soccer, they love it. And as a result, they tend to be a pretty contentious people. They like to fight in general. Um, so at the elementary school, uh, Campos Blancos, we you know, they'd have a recess time and they would invent all kinds of crazy games because we'd have like, you know, old tires around and giant pieces of bamboo and boards and they just like make stuff up. I remember one time they made this high bar and everyone lined up to jump over it. It was pretty neat. Um, one of the stranger games involved these. <laughs> what they would do is they would pull, because they had these in the classrooms, you know, so they could walk around on the floors, and their game was to pull them off and whip them at each other. And so I'm standing outside, you know, supervising recess, and there's just like slippers flying by my head, and, you know, one hits me on the arm. You see a kid like jump up and, you know, you know get him in the. <laughs> and, you know what? They, they loved it. They were so, they were happy because it was, I mean, I don't encourage that, but there was no sides. It's, it's just, you know, see, see who you can hit. And it was, you know, it didn't really do any damage. As soon as you took a soccer ball out, the whole situation changed. They suddenly get onto two sides and every time they would come back in from, break, from recess, somebody would be angry. There would have been a bad call. Somebody would have rammed into somebody else and hurt them. It was, it was endless. And it got so bad that we just said, forget it. No more soccer. You can throw shoes at each other, fine. But avoid soccer. <laughs> and honestly, they were a lot happier that way. Now, sure, they complained. Mister, you never let us play anything fun. Um, but then they'd go outside and they'd have fun and they'd come back smiling. So, yeah, it didn't make sense. <laughs> what I found personally very interesting, though, is that competition extends beyond games of any kind. It's something that is honestly very prevalent in Christian culture. I remember once I went, I was canvassing, and I came to a Church of Christ. It was very large. It wasn't this Church of Christ. And so, you know, I have books, and I had just sold like 10 books to these two guys in a store, so I was like, ha, I'm really happy. And so I go in, and I come to the pastor. I give the pastor, you know, hi, my name is Jensen. I'm, a, I'm working my way through school, and I'm the great controversy. And he immediately starts flipping through it. And what he's looking for is he's looking for something to fight about. 
because as soon as he found something objectionable, he started to contend with me. Now, he knew that I was an Adventist because I had told him, he had asked me. And this started a two-hour debate. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. And so, now the thing is that because of my, my years of game playing and searching for people's weaknesses, I'm actually quite vicious. Um, it's very difficult for me to be in a debate and remain calm because all of those instincts come back out of wanting to just dominate the other person. And so, you know, I don't like to debate because I know that it makes me angry. And so I'm, the reason, part of the reason why I lasted for two hours is I'm just, I'm just trying to listen to him. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. And he's, he's hitting me about the Sabbath, like, you know, the Sabbath is, hey, have you read Romans, such and such, what this is. And finally, I lose my patience. It's like, you know what? This guy's never going to stop. I'm just going to hit him with a verse and be done with it. So, so I, I take him to the best verse that I could think of, and even I was shocked at how it affected him. His jaw basically dropped, like, he didn't know it existed, he's like, oh. And then you know what? He got really angry. He lost. It never was about finding truth. He wanted to fight. And as soon as he had lost the fight, he got very angry. It was exactly like I was playing him in a game. And the sad thing is, there are many people that enjoy fighting with debates and things like that. And so, honestly, I've just put the whole thing behind me. I don't like to, dis I try to avoid those discussions just because of my own personal weakness in that area. Because I don't want to hurt someone. Um, that doesn't mean I'm right about everything, by the way. It's just my attitude when I get into those things. It's, it's dangerous. Um, I don't want, I like being here at OH because, because they restrict those things. I think part of the reason why you students are as nice and as sweet as you are is because you're not brawling with each other every day. And yes, I know we have our issues, but believe me, you go to other schools where they actively compete and it's kind of scary. Yeah, I don't want OHA to be a place like this where we actively encourage trying to just beat someone else up. I want it to be a place more like this, a place where, yeah, <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> You know, I want it to be a place where we help each other grow stronger. Um, that's really the point of being a teacher. The, pur the purpose of being a teacher really is to help people increase. My goal is not to show how much better I am than all of you, nor is it any other teacher's goal to do that. Our goal is to make sure that you grow as much as possible and give you the space to do that growing. And so that's why I'm very happy we don't do competition because competition is all about doing this to someone else that you can get better. You can build those same skills that you use in competition without the competition. You can still get stronger, you can still get smarter, you can still do your absolute best and compete against a piece of paper instead of against a human being. I feel silly because I don't know if I'm supposed to pray or not when I end. I do, okay. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, I thank you for taking me out of a really bad situation. And really, you've done a lot to undo the, the hate and the damage that it caused. Um, I ask for those that may not be convinced or understand it yet, you'd help them to see by personal experience the difficulties that it causes 
because I know it helped me. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.